What is up, ladies and gentlemen? What is going on? Today is Sunday. It is February 24th. It is currently 11.30 a.m. Yes, I did have to delay the show here for a little bit. Apologies for that. Obviously, we've got a lot of breaking HoloLens-related news that I'm going to get into. And you know what I was doing, guys? Okay, so The Verge has a really good HoloLens 2.0 video that they've dropped on YouTube. And I was looking at it real quick and I was like, oh, I really need this footage in my show. And so I grabbed the Verge footage. But the problem is I don't want to be talking here in this window, right? Like you see me in this window right here talking. And I don't want that window down there to have another talking head in that window as well because I think it's really distracting like when you see these other videos other places and you have like you know a, a talking head here and a talking head there it's like what's going on right so I took that verge video and I tried to edit the talking head guy out of it and it took way the heck longer than I ever thought it thought it would of course, that was a problem. And Sebastian from MRTV is checking in. And you know what's hilarious, man? Sebastian is checking in. He is in Barcelona. This guy does not sleep. This guy is incredible. I mean, this guy is all over the place. He doesn't sleep. He works hard. And not only that, but Sebastian is basically... He's in our thumbnail image, you know, pretty much, right? Uh, hold on one second here. Let me uh, let me go ahead and grab. Um, let me show you guys what our thumbnail image looks like today. I mean, you guys have probably already seen it, right? Let's see, where is it here? Uh, one second. Okay, VR three six five 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 five. Okay, yeah. So if we go over here to our webby browser, see this little picture right here. This little picture is a hollow it's a random hololens 2.0 picture that i grabbed you know right before this show and i made this the thumbnail image and is it just me guys or does that look like sebastian that's sebastian right there i got a picture of sebastian on my thumbnail image sebastian i hope you're allowing me to have this picture of you trying the hololens 2.0 out way ahead of time uh, yeah, and Sebastian says, I am indeed all over the place for our passion. Yeah, that's what it's all about. It is all about the passion, and that's what we're here for. That is what we're doing. HoloLens 2.0 has been revealed. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. But, yeah, I was looking at that image, and I was like, man, that kind of looks like Sebastian, doesn't it? It, I mean, that could be Sebastian if you didn't know better. I mean, maybe it is Sebastian, and I just don't even know it. But anyway, here we are, guys. This is episode 108 of the show. And one thing I definitely have to mention without any question about it is I am discombobulated like a mofo. Yes, I am. And what do I mean by discombobulated? Well, basically what I mean is I'm not ready. I am not ready for this show. Not even close to being ready for this show. But you know what? People are not going to wait around. I got to do a goddamn show. I got to get it over with. And I got to deal with it. So we're just going to try to get into it. Because what happens is on every Sunday, it's the same story. I wake up early in the morning. Yeah. And Sebastian is like, nope, it's not me. But it does kind of look like you a little bit. I swear. If we got the exact picture of Sebastian, like the exact same picture and put it side by side, we'd be like, yeah, kind of looks a little bit like Sebastian. But what I'm saying here is on Sundays, it's the same story, okay? You guys under got to understand, I'm on the West Coast. And so we do the VR Roundtable episode at 9 a.m. And so I get up in the morning and I'm doing my miscellaneous stuff in the morning, you know, just kind of waking up. Uh, coming to reality, you know, eating some breakfast, getting ready. Then I hop on to the, the VR Roundtable episode, and I was the host today. And there are some times where I'm doing the VR Roundtable episode, and Gary's the host, or Steve is the host, or Chris is the host, and I will cheat. 
Like, as I'm doing the episode, I will cheat and I'll try to find stories for my show that's coming up later. Or I'll try to make the thumbnail image for my show that's coming up later. But today I was the host of the VR Roundtable episode. I couldn't cheat, so I had to wait until it was over. I had to grab this image real quick, throw that up there, and then I had to try to get some news stories together real quick. I had to try try to grab some videos. So it was a mad scramble, to be sure. But anyway, we're going to try to do the best show that we can for you today. This obviously is Sunday Fun Day, so we're going to try to have fun. We're going to try to be fun about it, and we're going to try to do the best job that we can. Okay, so where we're going to go to right now is I'm going to bounce over here, and this is a CNET uh, story. They've got a pretty good story on here. HoloLens 2 AR headsets announced. 3500 bucks available to pre-order now. Yeah, that have you got your pre-order in yet? Oh my god, what are you doing? You're slipping. You haven't gotten your pre-order yet? You mean you don't have $3500 burning a hole in your pro- in your pocket? You must be out of your mind, right? So this is going to ship a little bit later this year and we've got a lot of details to get into. Um, as far as HoloLens 2.0, absolutely, we've got quite a few details to get into. But what we're going to do before we do all of that, I'm going to bounce back over here to our standard scene. And we have the official HoloLens trailer, the standard HoloLens 2.0 trailer that was released on YouTube. I got that. Might as well start off by checking that out before we do anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and pump the volume on this trailer that's playing right now, and we're going to switch over to HoloLens 2.0. So let's go ahead and check that out. Here we go. Right, there it is. That is the official trailer for HoloLens 2.0. And I got to tell you, pretty dope. It's a pretty dope trailer. And this product looks pretty damn good. Now, the honest truth here is it's much ado about nothing. In fact, I am Rutz in chat right about now says, Anthony, when are you changing your name to AR365? AR. 365. I kind of like the sound of it. No, yeah, we're not changing our name to AR365, but VR365, look, the bottom line is VR and AR are so closely linked to- together that, you know, these are the same, it's the same technology, man. It's two different ways to look at the same technology. We're both talking about head mounted displays, we're both talking about eye tracking. We're both talking about a lot of similar things. And as the years continue to move along, these two different products are just going to converge onto each other. AR headsets are going to start adding more and more VR to them. And VR headsets are going to start adding more and more AR to them. So I honestly think if you're watching 
a VR channel that never talks about AR, they're making a mistake. Like, like yeah, we, we don't want to turn this into AR365. No, we are all about VR. Also, we're all about gaming. Like, my focus is really on gaming here. And I'm interested in gaming, but I would be a complete and utter idiot to just stick my head into the sand and not pay attention to this stuff because this stuff is going to matter. This stuff is going to be a part of the public consciousness over the next 10 to 15 years. And slowly but surely, AR is going to be a major factor. And we can't just completely ignore this. So that's my personal take on it. And it's like, do I talk about AR every day? Yeah, I do. No, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't talk about AR every day. I guarantee you, you can go and look at some of my shows and it might be 12 shows that go by before I even mention the word AR. But this is HoloLens 2.0. This is pretty big news. They've completely redesigned it. We're talking double the field of view. We're talking a much smaller and more lightweight product. We're talking about a product that is not a giant bulbous big bug contraption that is on your head. It's a much more slimmer design and a more elegant design for a more elegant era. Uh, you know, like Star Wars, right? It's an elegant weapon for an elegant era. And yeah, we can get into the weapon part of it as well because that is in the news. The Microsoft employees that are like, bro, what are we doing here? We signed a half a billion dollar contract with the U.S. military so that we can allow people to kill people a hell of a lot easier through the power of HoloLens 2.0. I mean, yeah, it's, it's an interesting topic. We can get onto that as well. But basically, what I want to do now is let's go back over to our webby browser. And this is this CNET article that I'm talking about. And they kind of break it down. And let's just scroll through this and let's cover some of the main features. Comfort, better visuals, easier to use with your hands, $3,500. You know, there's a couple of little things that we know about this. Um, um, there's eye tracking. It's actually analyzing your, uh, your IPD. Um, you know, there's lots of things this thing is doing. Now, they've got several different articles, actually, on CNET about this. There's articles on Engadget. There's articles on The Verge. There's videos of this. There's a lot of people talking about this, a lot of people getting into this. Okay, so one of the things they're talking about here, at $3,500, it's still not made for everyday people. Duh, duh, absolutely. Yeah, an elegant weapon for a more civilized age. Yeah, that's the quote I was looking for there. And um, at 3,500, this is not meant for you and me. Uh, absolutely not. It is not meant for us. However, there's something we want to talk about for a second here. Reaganomics, baby. Reaganomics. Trickle down, econ trickle down economics, right? Or trickle, trickle down, what is it called? Um, I forget what it's called, but you know, like it trickles down, right? So it's $3,500 right now, but 10 years from now, it might be $350. That's the way these things work. I don't know that it's going to, you know, go down to one tenth of its price in 10 years, but who knows? It's possible. Now, HoloLens 2.0 is arriving later this year in 2019, but we don't have a definite release date. However, you can possibly pre-order this thing if you are crazy about it. You can go ahead and pre-order it. It is there. HoloLens 2 tracks your eyes. Microsoft included sensors near the nose ridge of HoloLens 2 pointed right at your eyes. The technology is used to log you into the device. And so they're going to know everything about you, bro. Yeah, it is beginning. The eye tracking, you know, analyzing who you are, signing you in. It's going to be a security feature right now, right? But it's all big brother from that point forward because there's cameras. You can film everything you're seeing. Big brother hath begun. And MRTV is reporting live in chat that you can rent this thing for 125 bucks a month. You know, you can rent a HoloLens 2.0 for 125 bucks a month. Hey, that's not bad at all. The question though I have though is how long can you like how long do you have to sign up? 
Like if I could sign up for $125 a month, I'll rent the thing for two months for $250 and I'll return it. You know, I'll pay $250 to see everything amazing that it could possibly do for two months and get a firsthand experience of it and then return it. But I'm guessing you probably have to lease the thing for a guaranteed period of time that is a hell of a lot longer than two months. So yeah, I, I don't think you're going to be able to just grab it for one month for $125, but that would be super cool if it would. Okay, another thing that we're going to talk about here, onboard iris recognition, which works with Windows Hello to log you into the HoloLens 2. Um, the Magic Leap 1 and most VR headsets come with dedicated controllers. The HoloLens 2, no controllers. It relies 100% on hand recognition and voice recognition via Cortana. Now the first HoloLens recognized basic little hand movements, but this one recognizes 21 points of articulation. 21 points of articulation. And at Mobile World Congress, now here's the thing, one of the other things I need to say in regards to Mobile World Congress, it is going on right about now and they had their whole entire press conference, I didn't watch any of it. Like I had, well, actually I did watch a couple of minutes of it while we were doing our show, but I pretty much had to turn it off and I had to host VR Roundtable. So I haven't seen any of that stuff and I'm gonna see it later today. So I'll see all the little demos they did on stage and I'll, I'll hear technical fellow Alex Kitman breaking it down. He's a very interesting guy. You know, he breaks things down in an interesting way. So I will be curious to hear all of that, see all of the demonstrations and find out all of the stuff that is going on right now at uh, Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. But I haven't been able to check that out yet. So apologies for that. If there's some stuff you'd like me to talk about that I just haven't seen yet. But yeah, they did show a sample though. They did have one guy, I don't know if he was like playing the piano or if he was typing on a keyboard or what the guy was doing, but it was analyzing his fingers. Like they showed the, the tracking in real time and it was analyzing it quite well. Okay, Lone Tech is jumping into chat and is saying, is 21 points of articulation supposed to impress me, brah? It sounds the same as what Leap Motion does right now. Yeah, but you know what? This technology is built in from the get-go. Like it's all integrated. You don't have to snap a Leap Motion onto the outside of it. So, I mean, there is some good things there. You know, there is some good aspects of this. Another thing is, like you see this picture right here. Do you see that little camera that is right in the front of it? That is the brand new Connect Azure. Connect Azure. Oh my God, the power of Azure, the power of the cloud, and the power of Connect are combined into one incredible little camera that is going to analyze everything in your room. But to be honest, Connect Azure is a more fully featured Connect that is going to scan your room and it is going to have a better awareness of your room. Rather than simply scanning your entire room and just creating a mesh that just drapes over your room like somebody just draped, drapes over everything, it's going to do that, but it's also going to analyze your sofas and your chairs and humans and dogs. It is going to use deep neural networks. It is going to be incredible, guys. No, no but it, it supposedly will analyze your, your sofas and stuff like that to a better degree. It might be a little bit beyond where Magic Leap 1 is at this point in time. But, you know, I mean, obviously we're going to have to kind of wait on a lot of this stuff. Okay, so field of view is doubled. Apparently, it is about 52 degrees in terms of the field of view. And if you guys watch the, uh, is it The Verge? I think it's The Verge's video on this, or maybe it's in Gadget. There's a number of pretty good videos that are out there about this brand new HoloLens 2.0. And they're saying that the improvement in field of view is really dramatic. Like this is a major leap forward, folks. This is really a major leap. Okay, glasses accepted. 
Unlike many other AR headsets and smart glasses, including the Magic Leap 1, HoloLens 2 is designed with glasses in mind. Also, you got that really sweet flip-up visor. Like that flip-up visor looks really cool and seems to work really cool. Okay, you've got new apps from Microsoft and Partners, blah, blah, blah. You got Alex. Okay, now this picture right here, Alex Kitman, you know, he's meditating in a special nice little, like that is a cool picture right there. Alex Kitman, technical fellow. He is a technical fellow and he chills in a major, major way. He's got that Zen pose down. Somebody called him the, the hipster Spock. Um, when I was watching the Mobile World Congress live stream, somebody was calling him a hipster Spock, which is uh, kind of funny. But, okay, battery life, about three hours. Yeah, here's where we go into the downside. Okay, everybody ignore this image right here. That is Sebastian. Ignore that image because I do not want to get sued by CNET. So we're going to keep moving on down. Okay, here we go. HoloLens 3 is coming in a couple of years. So Microsoft says it plans to announce its follow-up to HoloLens 2 in the next year or so. The company didn't provide any details other than to say the device will be even more comfortable and even more easy to use and all of those kinds of things. Kitman said a prototype of the device was what helped Microsoft win that $480 million contract from the U.S. Army, which we might get into that discussion a little bit later today because that, you know, that's a, it's a subject that has kind of been sweeped under the rug a little bit. That story breaking on Saturday, very interesting that that story broke on Saturday and all of those kinds of things. But anyway, we'll get into that in a minute here. Now here's Azure Connect. Look at how much smaller it is though. I mean, major improvement in terms of how much smaller. This is basically doing everything that the original Connect can do, but way the F better. And you know, I am excited. I talked about this briefly on our VR Roundtable episode earlier today because there's going to be a separate Azure Connect that you can actually get for your PC that is not, it's $399 dev kit. You can pre-order it on Sunday. And I believe this is separate from, uh, from what do you call it, from the HoloLens 2.0. Like you're going to be able to get Connect separately. But what I'm hoping for is I can imagine a future where we're going to have some connect style device that we set off of the off to the side and it is going to analyze our skeletal situation it's going to map our body in every motion 21 points of articulation bra it's going to map us full body style it's going to generate a scan of what we look like, our clothes that we're wearing, and it's going to throw that into the VR world that we're in in the real time. Real time body tracking, full size body tracking. I believe that will come at some point in time when I have no idea. But yeah, this is, uh, this is all the stuff that is going on with the Microsoft Connect. Uh, Microsoft Connect, HoloLens 2.0, and all the information that's breaking out there with HoloLens 2.0. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bounce back over here to our standard scene. And you know what I spent like 20 minutes on, and I haven't even used it yet. I spent 20 minutes on basically taking some footage from another video. And this is The Verge. Okay, so this is The Verge, Microsoft HoloLens 2, hands-on. And basically what I did was I snipped the crap out of this video so that we could have some nice video playing in the background courtesy of the verge oh wait this is the wrong one hold on see this is the one where it still has the talking head which i didn't want to do this because does anybody want to see two talking heads at the same time of course you don't you want to see a singular talking head so i made a special clip that removed the talking head out of there so that was the original video and here is the anthony edited version yeah so this is uh dieter from the verge and he does a lot of good work for the verge a lot of good video pieces like he did that video piece on the intel vaunt glasses back in the days and so he's kind of running this thing through its paces 
Alex Kitman was there. He had an interview with Alex Kitman. Now, right here, you can kind of see the back of the HoloLens 2. That's where all the technology is in the back there. That's the Intel Verge glasses, by the way, but that's, that's HoloLens 2.0. And so this is what it's using. It's using waveguide technology. That's how it gets the signal into your eyes. That is basically how AR is working. 500 nits. 2K resolution per eye. This is a major improvement, and that is the estimated field of view right there. And you can see that the estimated field of view is actually pretty good. And then look at it. It's got built-in IPD adjustment. It's got those little sensors right on the front that are analyzing your eyes. The actual hand tracking is improved by leaps and bounds. You see this guy, you know, you can grab stuff here. That's the Microsoft Azure there. You got uh, four extra cameras. Okay, this is where they're talking about the mesh. You know, they put a mesh on the entire room. That is what Magic Leap does. But what they're saying is their mesh is more advanced because it determines this is a standard issue sofa. This is a standard issue coffee table. This is a standard issue human. This is a standard issue dog. You know what I mean? So it's analyzing that stuff where I believe Magic Leap at this current point in time, it doesn't do that. What it does is it simply looks at surfaces and it creates a mesh over all flat surfaces, but it doesn't have the intelligence to know whether one surface is a desk, a table, a sofa, or whatever. Now, of course, at this point in the video, they're talking about how this isn't meant for gamers. You know, you're not playing Halo on this, bruh. This is for Enterprise, and that's what they're showing here. It's for doctors, surgeons, it's for BMW engineers. Now, here we saw the flip view idea you know, where you flip it, it looks like it flips pretty good. That is the old HoloLens. And here they're talking about HoloLens 1. They did show some gaming stuff. They showed how you could look at a web page here. But HoloLens 2.0, look at that fine pinpoint accuracy there when the guy's moving it around and doing all that stuff. Now, R. Gambo says $3,500. Ha, 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 ha. Microsoft uses government funding to, to develop commercial product. Rich get richer. Yeah, um, well, you know, it is what it is. I mean, they took half a billion from the military, and we can get into that a little bit later. I, th I like this design, though. I mean, it looks pretty slick. You know, is this better than Magic Leap 1? Well, see, Magic Leap 1, you got a puck. There's no puck here. You got a singular device. There's a lot of weight in the back. There's a lot of weight in the front. And what it does is they've balanced it perfectly. They've got a larger field of view. They double upped on their field of view, about a 55, I think, degree, 52 or so degree field of view. Um, this puts tremendous pressure. Oh my God, an incredible amount of pressure on Magic Leap. Like all the, imagine if you were the guy that freaking runs Saudi Arabia, the guy that runs Saudi Arabia that had somebody off. And I shouldn't have said that. Why did I just say that on live television? Now I'm going to be attacked by a drone. There's a drone incoming. Oh my God. But no, the uh, the Saudi crown prince, right? The head guy of Saudi Arabia, he invested 500 million, 500 million into Magic Leap. I don't know if his investment is looking so hot right about now when you've got a vastly superior product that is coming out later this year, doesn't cost all that much more and vastly superior. So, you know, that is an interesting situation here. But yeah, that is the Microsoft HoloLens. Was it worth it, guys? Was it worth it for me to spend 25 minutes to edit out this guy's talking head so we can get this key footage? I think it was. I think it was worth it. Nah, probably not. Okay, so let's see, folks. What else can we get into? That's basically the big story of the day, guys. That is my big story of the day. Don't have a hell of a lot else to go to. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and switch back over here to our webby browser. Let's go ahead and do that. And one of the topics I get into every single day, like clockwork, of course, is the daily deal of the day. Yeah, if I don't have anything else to go to, at least I can go to the Oculus daily deal of the day. 
And today's daily deal, not a very good one in my opinion. I Expect You to Die is not a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, look at these ratings, guys. We're talking about 704 ratings, and that is more than four and a half stars. That is like four and almost three quarter stars there. I Expect You to Die, very good ratings. A lot of people rant and rave about this. And there are 12 hours left. It is going for 15 bucks. That is 40% off. No, do not send a clip to Al Jazeera. I will be eliminated in a New York minute. Please don't do that. Okay, 40% uh, off the normal price of $24.99. So you can grab this for 15 bucks. But dude, I got to tell you, I hate to say this. Now wait, the developer is at Shell Games, right? Yeah, Shell Games is a developer. I, I always get this mixed. I get this game mixed up with Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, which is by Steel Crate Games. I always get those two games mixed up. What is it? What is it about keep talking and nobody explodes and I expect you to die? Inside my brain, it's taken both of those games and put it into one box. And it swears that they're the same game. They're not the same game. They're very different. I don't know why I have that locked into my head. But I think part of the reason I have it locked into my head like that yeah, the prince expects me to die. <laughs> okay, the reason I have it locked into my head like that is because these games go on sale every other day. I swear to you, if we could check how many times I Expect You to Die has been discounted since its original launch. Let's see, does Oculus, does it show its original launch date on the Oculus Rift? November 30th, 2016, okay? That's when it launched on the Oculus Rift. I don't know when it launched on Steam, but I will tell you this. This game has gone on sale like 35 different times, and that is probably half the number of times this game has gone on sale. It is always going on sale. Like there are, I doubt there's been four months that have gone by where this game has not been on sale during that, some point during that four month period. It always goes on sale. And uh, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, that always goes on sale as well. That's why I mix these two games up, because they are always going on sale. Okay, what else can we get into? That's pretty much all I got. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bounce over to Upload VR. Let's go ahead and refresh this. This was earlier in the day. This is where somebody had a little leaked picture. See this little leaked picture right here of HoloLens 2? And it was like, oh my God, there's HoloLens 2, brah. That's the real one. This is earlier today. Let's go ahead and refresh this. <clears throat> Okay, we have now refreshed this. And as you can see, Microsoft's... Uh, oops, I just screwed up my microphone here. Hold on one sec. Uh, Microsoft's Azure Connect, 400 bucks. Development kit is now available for pre-order. So is everybody that uses VR chat, is everybody pre-ordering this like a mofo? Because the hope is, like I was saying, I really hope we can get some full body tracking action with this. And I hope it is a hell of a lot better. I don't think Microsoft is really actively working on that. But somebody might be able to hack this or figure something out. And then we can get some full body tracking. That's what I want from Azure Connect. And there is a beautiful kitty cat. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back and go back to the main stories here. Um, Microsoft reveals HoloLens 2 AR headset. They sure as hell did. Let's go ahead and click on this story and just see if there was any information I might have missed out of this. I think we covered pretty much everything. And actually, they don't have uh, much stuff on this anyway. So they did have this on-stage live demonstration. I have not checked that out yet. So that's what I need to do. Like Once this is all over with and I can go relax... I'm going to have to check out this whole thing and watch the entire deal. But they do have some specifications that have been listed out. Optics, see-through holograph lenses, resolution 2K per eye, holograph density 2.5K radiance, whatever the hell that means, eye-based rendering, hand tracking, eye tracking, voice command, 6 DOF tracking, spatial mapping, mixed reality capture, Mixed hologram and physical environment photos and videos. 
Um, the Snapdragon 850 is the Qualcomm processor that is in there. It's got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, USB, blah, 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 blah. And it does do 1080p, 30 frames a second video. So Big Brother is real and it is alive. So if you're at the bar next Friday night and somebody's walking around with their HoloLens 2.0, they could be filming everything. Okay, let's go back to the main page here. Uh, let's see, is there any other news that's going on on a Sunday? See, that's the problem with Sunday, 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 is there's really hardly any news on a Sunday. And uh, this Sunday was very similar to that. Okay, I'm going to bounce over to Road to VR. Whoops, hold on here. Uh, let's bounce over to Road to VR, see if these guys got anything popping off. HoloLens 2 specs reveals. Uh, two to three hour active battery 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 life optional top strap and more okay here's where we found out about the optional top strap breaking news guys breaking news there is a strap on the top how incredible is that okay let's see here um <clears throat> Resolution. Microsoft isn't giving the exact resolution, but says that the resolution is 2K per eye, about 47 pixels per degree, uh, which we understand to be the same pixel density as the original headset. Obviously, it's just a you know doubling the field of view pretty much. The specs note a three to two aspect ratio. Okay, that's kind of a difference. That's a major difference, guys. So here's another little tidbit. They're going three to two, which is more like an old school TV than 16 by nine. See, the original HoloLens had a 16 by nine FOV and ultimately Magic Leap figured this out. Like Magic Leap came to realize in an in a AR situation, you don't need widescreen. You need more up and down because you're in people's real houses and stuff. And so like if I'm looking at Dr. Grorbortz over there on my wall, it's more about up and down. Like you want to see C-3PO standing there by my wall, right? See that green screened wall right there that is totally and utterly fake? You want to see C-3PO standing right there. And so if you have this really wide view, who cares about that? You're looking for C-3PO. You're looking for characters standing in your actual living room. And so they've switched to the three, the three to two aspect ratio. Yeah, old school TVs are 4-3. This is 3-2, but it's very similar. It's much more similar than the widescreen 16 by 9. And here's the thing, like Microsoft, they could have switched to a 3-2 aspect ratio and they would gain FOV just by doing that because of just the way that it's purported. And so, but they have increased it as well. So, you know, it's kind of a double dip there. So the field of view is more than double the field of view in the original, but it's a little confusing because they're saying we're talking about a 65 degree horizontal field of view, but... On that other story, I don't know, was it CNET or some website I was on was talking about 52 degrees horizontal field of view. So I kind of feel like there's a little bit of fudging that's going on here. We're kind of clouding the issue and we might actually have to wait until somebody in real life actually gets their hands on these things to know the exact, like to have an exact comparison where you can have the Magic Leap 1 field of view, the HoloLens 2 field of view, and you can have them superimposed on top of each other to know exactly what we're talking about here. It, it We still don't know exactly. Eye-based rendering, what the hell does that mean? I don't know. But it says display optimization for 3D eye position. We know that the headset includes eye tracking. This suggests that the system takes into account not only the IPD, but also the lens eye distance to adjust rendering for ideal visuals. This should mean a more comfortable experience from user to user with automatic software adjustment. Okay, that sounds good. The processor, yeah, it is a Snapdragon 850 along with Microsoft's second generation holographic processing unit, the HPU. The original HoloLens used an x86 Intel processor. They kicked Intel to the curb and it is all Snapdragon all the time. Now, battery life, two to three hours of active use. 
ah, that really hurts. That really freaking hurts. You know, one thing I was thinking about too, I was thinking about the, uh, the Oculus Quest. Okay, you know how we're so excited and so jazzed for the Oculus Quest. And I think I mentioned at one point that the Oculus Quest might not be a bad idea for like VR arcades, location-based entertainment centers and all that stuff. But you know what I forgot about, guys? I forgot about the friggin' battery life. The battery life is a problem when it comes to VR arcades, location-based entertainment centers, because basically for every little booth that you're using, for every little amount of square space that you're using to have people using Oculus Quests, you got to have two of them. You got to have two Oculus Quests because as soon as one dies, as soon as the battery dies out, you got to swap it out for another one. And that would be the same thing with the HoloLens 2. Is like if you really wanted to use this for an extended period of time, you pretty much need two of them. At some point, I think we need to figure out hot swappable battery options, like maybe an external battery pack that you can put on your belt that is hot swappable. That is because right now, HoloLens 2 and the Oculus Quest, I don't believe there's any way to swap the battery. It is built in, it is locked in. But what would be kind of cool is if there was a little connector somewhere on there that you could run a wire to, and then you could have the wire running down your back to a thing on your belt where you can have a hot swappable battery pack so you can keep on playing all damn day. But the battery life, two to three hours, that is a major concern. Now we did hear that you can actually wear glasses. That is a plus because Magic Leap 1, you gotta pay another 400 bucks for the prescription insert. So if we're gonna compare prices to prices, remember that because Magic Leap 1 is like what? $2,300, $2,400 for Magic Leap 1, but you gotta pay another 400 or whatever it is for the prescription insert if you happen to be a glasses wearer. So think about that, consider that. Top strap, breaking news, breaking news. This is a Road to VR exclusive. There is a top strap, an optional top strap, which runs from the back of the head strap to the front for added comfort. Unfortunately, we did not get to see that top strap. Uh, you know, I didn't hear anything about audio. I wonder if they improved the audio anyway. We didn't really hear much about audio. Hopefully the voice commands are dramatically improved. It does have legit eye tracking, real-time eye tracking. The hand tracking hasn't been improved by leaps and bounds. And so, yeah, anyways, just wanted to make sure we covered all the little HoloLens details. And then guess what, guys? I don't have to talk about the HoloLens 2 again for like five months. So just chill the F out on the HoloLens thing, all you AR haters. All you AR haters just need to chill the F out. Okay, Mozilla, Mozilla has announced that there is a Firefox Reality AR web browser for HoloLens 2. Great, if you're rich as F, you can go ahead and check out some webby browsing, some webby browsing in full AR. You've always wanted to see your dog, your cat, and your wife, but you wanna see them in the distance and still have your webby browser right there. And you are gonna be able to do that with the brand new Firefox browser, specifically designed for HoloLens 2.0, Firefox Reality. Okay, well, I will say that that is basically what I have for you guys. Uh, let's see, we can go ahead and check out the various subreddits. That is always something that will work. So let's gonna go ahead and refresh this. And let's just take a look at some of these subreddits and see what's popping off. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's see, I'm in this browser. Okay, making sure I'm in the right spot here. Um, all right, yeah, Microsoft, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we know about this. Okay, why don't we click on the comments? I'm curious to see what people on the Vive subreddit might be saying about this. Um, can people actually own one, though? Not until later this year. Uh, this guy says twice the FOV is still too low. Uh, this guy says, yeah, isn't it 57 degrees now? I'll stay in Vive world until it's at least 100 degrees. Um, it's not meant for normal users anyway, so you can stay in Vive World for a few more years, pretty much. Twice the FOV is acceptable, and the resolution is great. This is not meant for immersion. 
Um, it was really tiny before. And then this guy says, is that the guy from Hackers? I wonder if he's talking about Alex Kitman. Alex Kitman, technical fellow. He is technical and he is a fellow. Okay, one thing I need to do is pop my chat out because I don't I don't do chat enough. Let's go ahead. Let's bounce over to chat. And let's see what people are talking about in chat. Okay, Lone Tech, which seems to be complaining an awful lot, says, why are we attributing the need for vertical field of view to Magic Leap now? That was the major selling point of the Rift DK1. Uh, Lone Tech also says, connecting a typical power pack to extend battery life should work fine. It should grow less hot when not emptying its own battery. Yeah, I mean, um, but there has to be some kind of connector, right? Like if there's no connector on the HoloLens 2 or on Oculus Quest, it doesn't matter. You've got to be able to connect it. See, the battery pack is like inside the thing. And so, so unless they have plans to sell an additional hot swappable battery pack, and I got to tell you right now, the chances of that happening for the Oculus Quest or for HoloLens 2 is damn near zero. But it's something that if this product got out there in the widespread open, people would be clamoring for that crap. Okay, R. Gambo says, there will be a battery pack auxiliary. R you really think so? I'd love to believe that. I'd love to believe that, but I, I find that hard to believe. Uh, Jim Hall says, but so easy to attach an external battery to the Go or Quest. Oh, I see what you guys are saying. Okay, so what you're saying is where you charge up like the little plug where you charge up the Go or Quest, you're talking about adding some kind of monstrosity or maybe just a cable. Yeah, yeah, I guess that could work. I guess that could work. That really could work. My mind has been blown. Okay, Azure Connect DK, develop AI models. Yeah, the only thing I'm interested in as far as that Azure Connect, I want full body tracking, y'all. I really do. Uh, let's see. Um, just checking out some other stuff that is going on over here on the Vibe subreddit. The future of pets in virtual reality. Let's click on this. Hopefully it's safe for work. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay, okay, so the pet is in VR. I, I don't get that. I don't get this. Sorry, it didn't work for me. Um, let's go back. <clears throat> Let's see, uh, Contractors VR Machete Knife Party, uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we talked yesterday about Vivecraft being uh, available for Minecraft 1.13.2. That is out there. How do you introduce Vive to someone who isn't familiar with PC gaming or VR? Well, what I typically would always do is putting somebody in VR for the very first time is I put them into basically the the standard steam vr tutorial that you first start out in man that was the thing that i put my wife in but i had the volume going so incredibly loud and you know when you're in that first steam vr tutorial and you have those little guys dancing around and the tables are like Z -Z 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 -Z. you know the tables are like Z -Z -Z, going up and going down and stuff like that it was so freaking loud and i put my wife into it she was freaked the hell out. She was so freaking scared. She was looking around. She's like, oh my God. She's like, get me out of here. Get me out of here. Because I had that volume just so freaking loud on that part. Um, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Where can I buy Vive controllers at a reasonable price? Not in this galaxy, unfortunately. In a galaxy far, far away. Not this one. Let's see what they're going to say here. Um... I would try like hell to get the screws out and do a proper fix of the trackpad so you don't have to open again. And this guy, these are not the controllers you're looking for. Da, 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 da. Yeah, of course. I knew that was incoming. I'm surprised somebody said like um, in a galaxy far, far away. Like, isn't that the obvious reply here? I guess not, but that would be my obvious reply. Um, yeah, you're not going to buy Vive controllers for a reason. They don't exist. Vive controllers do not exist at a reasonable price. Um, Shadow Legend VR. You know, I could rant a little bit on this for a second because it's like, so I did a Let's Play of Shadow Legend VR, right? And I uploaded the, no, I, I'm not even going to get into it. Never mind, never mind. I'm not going to get into that. I will not get into that. Never mind. Um, that is behind the scenes type shit. 
Okay, um, Gorn crashing PC. Yeah, see, I'm just scrolling through stuff, guys, because I, I don't have any more topics at this point in time. I guess I could go to uh, Mailbag. I could go to yesterday's show and go to Mailbag. Let's check the PlayStation VR subreddit real quick. I'm going to give this a quick, fast refresh. Oh, you know what? I can mention this. And this actually, this actually works perfectly for the topic I was talking about yesterday. This was towards the very end of the show yesterday. I talked about how there's a conundrum with upcoming PlayStation VR games that you really can put upcoming PlayStation VR games into two distinct categories. And category one is legitimate, legitimate upcoming PSVR games where the dev is actually working on the game right now. They've actually got a working build of the game. They, they have plans to release it in the very near future. They're going through the process. Maybe it's even already been submitted for cert by Sony. And the game is legitimately coming. I'm talking about stuff like Blood and Truth. I'm talking about stuff like Hot Shots Golf VR. I'm talking about stuff like Ghost Giant, Golem, like real legitimate P PlayStation VR games, right? Okay, so you have that group. Then you have another group of literally millions of PC VR games that are all coming to PlayStation VR eventually. Of course they are. And here's a perfect example. Here is an absolutely perfect example. So downstream VR, whitewater kayaking, PSVR confirmed, brah. It is confirmed. Now, how is it confirmed? Let's find out. Let's click on this little Twitter thing. So somebody says, please bring the PSVR. And this guy, you know, they're, they're responding, downstream VR, whitewater kayaking, the developers are responding, and they're saying, once our PC release is done, PSVR will be our next focus for sure. Okay, so that means a PlayStation VR version hath been confirmed. Okay, if we're going to consider that confirmation, then there's literally like 2,000 VR games that are confirmed for PlayStation VR because everybody's going to consider PSVR when their PC release is done. Once they're done with the Oculus Rift version and the Steam VR version, they're, of course, they're immediately going to go to PlayStation VR. It's the most logical thing in the world. Now, having said all of that, when are you actually going to be playing downstream VR whitewater kayaking? Not until 2020, y'all. Same thing with Contagion VR. Same thing with so many other uh, PlayStation VR games. And Jim Hall is saying simple. Order by expected release date. Well, release dates are... They're guesstimates, you know, they're get we don't have a release date. Like none of these people have a release date. They don't even have a targeted release date. It's completely guesstimation. And I'm just saying there's like two different categories of upcoming PlayStation VR games. And PlayStation VR is in a different kind of a ball game here, as far as that is concerned. It's the only system that's in this kind of a, a scenario. Um, it's a little bit different. Um, so anyway, I got screwed up here and somehow I got off of the PSVR subreddit. But let's get back. Let's get back, Johnny. Okay, so PT has been recreated in Dreams, potentially playable in PSVR for about five minutes and then, sh and then Sony will shut it down. This is what is going to happen over and over and over again. Those of you that are super quick on the draw... Well, you know what, Jim Hall? I think I'm going to make two completely different lists. Like PSVR games that are actually coming soon, and then PSVR games that are coming sometime in the long distance future. I think I'm going to have to have two different lists like that almost. Um, <clears throat> Battle Zone is on sale in Canada. Uh, psh, 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 psh. Anything else popping off over here? And there's always a little bit of news on PSVR subreddit. That's why I always like to kind of check it out and see what's popping off. Um, over here, we do have the Persistence is on sale for 40% off. Um, not too shabby. Okay, here's another example. Shadow Legends VR. This game, yes, this game is coming to PlayStation VR. It is, but not anytime soon. And it's not going to look anything like the PC VR game looks, in my opinion. It's going to be watered. This is another example. But see, what I'm speaking to here, basically the reason I'm so up in arms over this 
is because so many people on the PlayStation VR subreddit, it's like Undead, Undead Citadel. Like Undead Citadel, watch, I'm going to do a search. Uh, Citadel. Because there's a post here, right here, on the PSVR subreddit, submitted two days ago. Okay, so let's look at this. Look at this post. It was submitted two days ago. Undead Citadel is not going to look anything like this. It's not going to look anything like it. But there's people on the PlayStation VR subreddit, they just randomly look at these posts and they're like, oh, Undead Citadel, man. It's coming to PSVR and the graphics look amazing, brah. This is going to be awesome. This is my most wanted PlayStation VR game. It's not coming until 2021 and the graphics ain't going to look nothing like that. But yeah, it's my most wanted PSVR game. It's just confusing the people on PlayStation VR subreddit because all these games are being announced and they are no... Like the dev... I, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to talk out of the left side of my face. And I am going to say that that Dark Curry, the devs of Undead Citadel, I'm going to say they haven't written a single line of code. A single line of code. And I know I'm talking right out of my ass here. But I, I'm telling you, like 80% of these devs that are talking about their PSVR version have not written a single line of code. Now, they're planning on it. They're absolutely planning on it. Of course they're planning on it. Anybody with half a brain would plan on it. Anybody with any logic whatsoever is planning on it. Vitru VR, of course they're going to bring the game to PSVR. They'd be idiots not to bring Shadow Legends VR to PSVR. Now, have they written a few lines of code? Maybe, maybe a few lines of code. Do they have an up and running build? I seriously doubt it. And then Lethal Weasel is talking about Contagion. And he's saying, this is true. Contagion released that roadmap that said they would release the PSVR demo last November. And they just announced last week that they just got there. I'm telling you, exactly. This is exactly what I'm talking about. This is why I'm ranting and raving about this subject. And I know most of you guys don't care. You're like, God, why does Anthony have his panties in a bunch over this issue? It's just, I think it's giving false hope is what it's doing. There's a lot of people that just bought a PlayStation VR and they think they're getting like a thousand games next month. It's not happening. Like a lot of these games are not coming anytime soon. They are so very far away and you're giving these people this false hope. Um, you know, but I, it is what it is. I guess people will just, people will get upset. They'll be like, hey, whatever happened to that Undead Citadel? I remember two years ago. I saw a trailer for Undead Citadel. Whatever happened to that game? Gee, I wonder. Um, but anyway, that, that worked out nicely. I was able to rant about that for quite some time. Okay, what else can we do, guys? What else can we do? Well, we can go back to the Oculus Rift subreddit, of course. Let's go ahead and check that out. <clears throat> Oculus. Yeah, did you guys like that rant? I hope you did. Okay, here's Undead Citadel first combat trailer. We talked about it very much just recently. This does look damn good. Let's go ahead and click on the comments and see what people are talking about up in here. I mean, this does look drop dead gorgeous and beautiful. Is that actual legitimate real gameplay footage? Uh, I don't think so. I really don't think so. So anyway, they are saying that it's coming out this year. So that is good news. So Undead Citadel is coming out this year. Um, apart from the first teaser trailer, the clips and this trailer doesn't seem to be pre-rendered. Oh, I thought this guy was one of the devs, but I guess he isn't the devs. He's just the OP. He's just the original poster of this. And he's saying that he does believe it's coming. Like, you don't know it's coming out this year. We hope it's coming out this year. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's Undead Citadel. It does look damn good. Hopefully it will look as good as that in reality. Okay, HoloLens 2, 3500 bucks. Let's just see what the uh, Oculus Rift fan base is saying about this. Doubled FOV while maintaining the same PPD. Nice. Actually, the, FOT, the FOV is more than five times bigger. Um, I think it's because they changed it to three to the three dash two ratio, which makes it seem so much bigger. Okay, this guy says that's a badass headset. It sucks that the tech is still industry oriented. I guess we'll have to wait until Oculus rolls out 
one of their mixed reality headsets. Also, Magic Leap 1 is dead now. Can't say I feel bad for them with their years of vaporware peddling, though. Man, I feel bad, though. I really do feel bad. Not for the Saudi Crown Prince. You know, I don't feel bad for that guy, but there's probably a lot of major investors in Magic Leap 1 that are going to be burned like none other. Oh my God, are they going to be burned. Now, here's something that's in the news. Final Assault VR. A lot of people are ranting and raving about Final Assault VR. Now, this game did get delayed. We're not getting it until probably April or so, <clears throat> but I believe there is... You can hop on the Discord server for Final Assault VR, and they have a beta for it. And like this guy, I mean, we got to take these comments with a, a very large grain of uh, salt, you know, some sea salt, right? But what is this guy saying here? He's saying, earlier tonight, I had a several hour session with some friends playing the beta. It's the most fun I've had in a while trying a new game. The gameplay is very fluid and the controls are intuitive. And this guy's ba basically saying that this is the best real-time strategy game since Brass Tactics. And you know what? It does look damn good. I mean, I'm not a real-time strategy guy. I'm not really a fan of real-time strategy very much. Like, Brass Tactics is not in my wheelhouse. But um, Final Assault on Steam. Let's just check out the Steam page again real quick. But yeah, a lot of people have gotten into the beta on this. And like, just looking at the trailer and stuff... This really does look quite magical, this Final Assault game. I'm really looking forward to this, even though this is normally not my jam. Because the thing that I keep going back to is, like, you're a little kid. You're playing in your living room. Your good buddy Josh is over for the day. You got your green army men. He's got the brown army men. And you're having a war. You know, you're having a war. And you got your pillow in the middle of the ground, and that's Mount whatever. It's the big mountain, you know. And you're, you're having a little battle on the ground playing army men. Everybody did this as kids, right? I did it with Star Wars characters as well. You know, you get a whole bunch of stormtroopers together and Darth Vader and everything. And then you'd have Luke and Leia and Han Solo and everybody over on the other side, Chewbacca. And you guys would play little battles on the ground. And that's basically what this is. And it looks adorable. I mean, it looks really cool. Yeah, it's so adorable that these... You know, bodies are exploding everywhere, but it's so cartoony. And just the way you actually draw, like, where you want things to go, right on the map, miniaturized everything. i got to clear my throat for a second here. So hold on. I'm going to go ahead and mute for a sec. Okay, there I go. Feel much better now. Had to do that. But, yeah, Final Assault, looking like April 2019 for this. But you could possibly bounce over to that Discord server and maybe you can get into the beta. Um, so let's go ahead and read what some people have been talking about in chat recently. DLG27 says, just email the developers for beta code. Enjoying Final Assault even though I am not a fan of this type of game. See, I haven't tried to get into the beta for that. Sometimes I don't try to get into these betas and stuff when maybe I should try to get into them. But the problem is, is like a lot of the developers, the people that are in the beta, they want to get a lot of reports on whether or not the game is crashing, how it's running. You know, they're they're trying to get like legit information. They're not doing it just for shits and giggles. It's not a glorified demo a lot of the times. If it was a glorified demo, I'd have no problem going into it. But a lot of times I don't get into these betas because I feel like I'd really have to do my due diligence and like send a detailed email back to them about like, well, your game crashes here or this was jittery or I really wish the controls, um, you know, I really wish there was an option for this and that. And I feel like you got to really get into a lot of that. And a lot of times I don't want to do that. So a lot of times I just don't get into these betas. I feel like I'll just wait around until I can get an actual review preview code or there's like a demo or something like that. I mean, I'm tempted because God damn, this looks good. And it really does look fun. Like this screenshot right there. Like, tell me that isn't beautiful. Look at that in the snow with a little baby tank that has like a flamethrower and everything. That looks smooth. I think I might have used this thumbnail image actually as one of my backgrounds not too long ago. And I did it because it just looks so damn good. Of course I'm going to do it. Okay, let's go back to the Oculus subreddit. I think this is where we got sidetracked. 
Um, my girlfriend didn't like how my old mounts looked, so I made some fancy ones. Let's go ahead and check this out. Yeah, this is called the wife appreciation factor or whatever. What do they call it? I forget. There's an actual phrase for this. It's like when you got to do certain things so your wife is like okay with it. And yeah, this guy went a little fancy with his Oculus sensor design. Pretty cool, brah. Pretty cool. Not a bad idea. Um, continuing to scroll through here. Now, here's an example of the exact opposite. Wife appreciation factor. I don't think there's a lot of wife appreciation factor for this. Look at that. Dude just grabbed like a rando stick from the backyard. And where do you get orange duct tape? Like that is interesting. That is probably the most interesting thing about that. Dude has some orange duct tape. Why don't we actually see what some of the comments are? Because I'm sure that some of them are funny. This guy says, it definitely looks like a thing to me. Uh, good luck when those batteries run out. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. That is kind of kind of ghetto fabulous, if you, you might call it ghetto fabulous. All right. I'm just scrolling down see if we find any other little notable things. Um at and to, de to demonstrate cloud-rendered SteamVR content streamed over 5G. We talked about that a whole hell of a lot yesterday. I still am interested in that. I really am. I mean, I just want to see, does it actually work? Like, does any of this cloud crap work? That's the question. Um, at some point in time, Marshall from Eminem, oh, Marshall from Eminem. Marshall from Detroit, VR documentary is great. Okay, is there something wrong with my brain? Because it's not great. It's actually the opposite of great. It is lame. It is straight up lame. Like, Oculus Ross, I hate to say it, brah, but Marshall from Detroit is one of the lamest VR 360 video things I've ever seen. Now, I'm not saying that Eminem is lame. I'm not saying that the actual documentary is lame or what they're talking about or the interview or any of the actual content, I'm saying there's nothing VR about it that is exceptional in any way, shape, or form. Not only that, it's actually bad. It's actually bad. Uh, let's see what the comments are, though. Maybe I'm off on an island by myself. You know, sometimes I am off on an island all by myself. Jim Hall says, I assume that everyone thinks just like me. And somebody else said, that's a California thing. It's people in California think everybody thinks just like me. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's a California thing. And I don't know if I really think, maybe I just assume people think like me. Um, <clears throat> they should think like me. Okay, but I just wanted to see if anybody chimed in and said, this was a dud. Okay, this guy chimed in. I had a quick look and it seemed to be just a 360 video. Did I miss anything? Like, like, huh? Like that's kind of, like I I would make the phrase like huh like like kind of like a dog going hmm? like that would be my reaction to this. Uh, music two one six nine says is it three D two sixty or two D? This guy says three D. Uh, VR guy says Felix and Paul always do a really great job on the three D and scale for average IPD population. But the thing is Felix and Paul I don't think Felix and Paul actually did this. I think they helped the people that did it. I don't think they actually did it themselves. Um, we see Felix and Paul and we think, oh yeah, this is quality. Because Felix and Paul is quality, usually. But I don't think they actually, I think they like helped the guy that did this. Um, okay, just scrolling down here. VR Roundtable. Yeah, you guys should have upvoted the shit out of this. This should not be on page three, guys. This is a major disappointment. Major disappointment time, guys. <laughs> I was the host of this episode, and it was not upvoted. Bad, bad, bad. Bad, bad, bad. Bad dog. Bad dog. Um, here's a... Oh, no, that's the same thing I was going to like. Here's another one. Marshall from Detroit is great. No, it's not. No, that's the same one. That is the same one. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, we pretty much have gone through what we can do. You might call it a shiz show. All right, folks. Well, that's basically going to do it. Well, you know what I could do before we bounce out of here? I love that thumbnail. Don't you guys love it? I hope I don't get sued, but I really like that thumbnail. That is Sebastian from MRTV. 
he posed for me on a beautiful white background. I thought that worked out beautifully. Okay, let's go ahead and check yesterday's show. Let's check yesterday's show and find out, did we have any comments? 11 comments, that's actually not too bad. Okay, spoiler, Simplex PL, it was not a shorter show. Exactly, every single time I hop on, every single time I hop on and say, it's gonna be a short show, it's gonna be a short show, it's gonna be a short show, never is. And VR Spry Guy, Captain Obvious, Somehow, when Anthony says it's going to be a short show, he always makes it at least an hour. Yeah, I don't know if it's like a subliminal thing or what it is because I will get different topics and it's like I keep going and going and going on a topic where maybe I would have let it die a lot. I think subliminally, I'm, I'm worried. Like on a subliminal level, I'm thinking, oh my God, this is going to be a short show. This is going to be a short show. So I need to milk every topic extra long and then it ends up being a crazy long show. Okay, Lee Wilson says, I have the Windows Store version of Minecraft, and I think it's always been shown in my Oculus library. It works and is slick if Minecraft is your thing. Maybe Vivecraft is to make the Java version work in VR. Yeah, you know, I've always wondered, I kind of would like to hear from like a hardcore um, Minecraft VR lover about like what's the differences between these like is it all about vivecraft or you know i don't know and then also i think there's some oculus people like i think there's some hardcore oculus people out there that don't like vivecraft just because of the name i swear i swear to you there are some hardcore Oculus people. They bleed Oculus blue or whatever comes out of an Oculus person's veins, you know? Like Oculus doesn't have a specific color. So I can't say it, they bleed blue or bleed green or whatever it is. But they are tried and true Oculus fanboys to the roots, you know, to the absolute roots. They were there in the DK1 days, the DK2 days. They got a poster of Palmer Lucky with no shoes on in their bedroom. They are all Oculus all the time. And because it's called Vivecraft, they could never get behind it. Am I crazy to say this? I guarantee you there's some people out there like that. Okay, let's be free. Let's be free, says, does he talk about Elysium VR? Because the background to the video is from Elysium VR, but can't hear him speak anything about it. Maybe I missed it. No, let's be free. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. This is what I do every day to make my backgrounds. Actually, we can go ahead. Let's look at all the backgrounds. Let's look at all the beautiful backgrounds. So let's go ahead and click up here. We'll go to videos. And we'll look at all the pretty backgrounds. Okay, so here's what happens, guys. Every day I wake up and I try to get ready for a show. And ideally, ideally what I'll do is I will go into the, you know, the Vive subreddit, Oculus subreddit, PSVR subreddit. I'll take a look at some of the different websites out there. <clears throat> and there might be some an, there might be some announcement about some big game like hey we've got a date for Dick Wild you know so if we get a date for Dick Wild you can bet your bottom dollar Dick Wild's going to be that background image as you can see right here but on other days there's nothing like I got nothing and so what am I going to do so I just like here I grabbed a, a rando Winlands background from the very first Winlands game uh here I didn't talk about static. I grabbed a rando static background. Here, I, I grabbed a rando Elysium background. Um, <clears throat> let's see, are there any more randos? Here, I grabbed a, uh, that's a background from Final Assault. Sometimes I just see pictures that look pretty. You know, here's a rando. That's a rando background from Battlezone. And I was like, oh, this is a very pretty and, vib and vibrant background perfect for a thumbnail image so yeah so half of the time it's randos just rando backgrounds and then half of the time they make a lot of sense like this one with sebastian makes a ton of sense yeah too many pictures of anthony it hurts my eyes i know i've just decided to lean into the the whole anthony thing i'm anthony guys i've leaned into it like even on in on, on vr game rankings the website like there's pictures of me now <laughs> I just said, F it. I'm just going to lean into this all the way and just whatever. I know it's goofy, but I got to do it. 
So anyway, let's go let's go back here to our standard scene and I got to get out of here. I'm starting to get hungry. I'm starting to get straight up hungry. And you know yesterday, I mentioned yesterday that I was going to go to that Thai place and get that green curry. I didn't go. I didn't get it. I had Mexican food instead. But now I'm getting real hungry for that Thai. So I think I'm going to bounce over there. Alrighty, guys. Well, that is basically going to do it. <laughs> Paradise Decay says, Someone can make a Flickr book of all those images of Anthony. Yeah, Anthony is spreading all over the world. It is a scourge upon the nation. And here is me in my nice business attire. Hi, everybody. How is it going? How's it going, folks? This is me in my... Somebody on um, somebody on the VR roundtable today, earlier today, was saying, Anthony looks like he's running for the Senate. And they said, I would vote for him. And it's like, nah, man, I'm trying to be the next Tom Brokaw, baby. I want to get hired by NBC News. All right, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. That is going to do it for our Sunday Fun Day show. It was a long one. It was a a good one, hopefully. We covered a lot of HoloLens. I know it bored a lot of people to death. But today is HoloLens 2 day. I mean, come on. It's HoloLens 2 day. It is what it is. You're going to see it on all the websites. That's the way it works. Tomorrow, we return to reality. We go back to reality. It will be Monday, 11 a.m., Back to normalcy, as I like to call it. Hopefully some legit news, some good stuff to work with, some good games to talk about, and all those kinds of things. Now remember, guys, we are getting Shadow Legend VR a week later this Thursday. So it's coming out on February 28th. So we have that to be excited for in this upcoming week. So we're going to look forward to that. But anyways, I will see you guys tomorrow at about 11 a.m. Pacific time, roughly. Look for me around then. I will see you guys then. I've got to bounce the heck out of here. Um, now i got to find out where my outro is, though, so I can hit my stop button. Okay, here we go. All right, yeah, I'm out of here. I will see you guys next time. Have a wonderful time. See you later. Later. <laughs>